Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns and welcome from the snowy Pacific Northwest. Big white flakes are not a rare sight in this neighborhood, but they're not typically falling from the sky, so this is a bit of a novelty. Anyway, we're here to talk about the Stevens Model 35 Target, a tip-up barrel, 22 caliber target pistol from the economy end of the spectrum. Uh, Stevens has been a name associated with firearms in this country since the mid-19th century, eventually combining with Savage Steven to become Savage Stevens, and they produced quite a lot of single-shot pistols from the latter third of the 19th century right on up to World War II. Um, the Model 35 and its ilk were in production from, I believe, the 1880s until the uh, until 1942, and um, it's a simple, robust, and very effective little single-shot pistol. They did variations in, excuse me, with spur triggers, and there were some changes to the model over the years, but essentially it was always just a simple tip-up single-shot 22 all it was ever meant to be. And they were inexpensive, they were robust, and to the best of my knowledge, they were actually used in target competition by some people. Not the cool kids, of course. They had, you know, far more elite things. But this was another one of those every man's guns, and in some cases, every boy's gun, because uh spanned a pretty good history when people were a little less uptight about firearms. Anyway, Let's take a look at it on the tabletop. Okay, this is not a terribly large gun. It has a six inch barrel and a uh, dovetailed in typical rifle sight, which was probably used on some of their small bore rifles too. Front sight is also dovetailed in, so the whole thing is drift adjustable. There is a bead type front sight and a buckhorn rear. Um, to open the gun, you simply push this button on the side, which is a screw. There's a cutout on this side of the breech. Got to get that centered. And then there is a matching piece in here that engages that when it's closed. And this example is reasonably tight. It's in very, very good condition. Um, earlier models had a non-rebounding hammer, so they had a safety notch. Um, by the time this one was made, which was probably between 1910 and 1920 from its features, um, but don't quote me on that, they had implemented a rebounding hammer, which removed the necessity for the safety notch. In previous versions of the gun, you would put the gun, the hammer, blah, in the safety notch, before opening it so that the firing pin didn't intrude and block things. Um, of course, then you just cock it for single action, pull the trigger. That's a very nice trigger pull for an inexpensive gun. And um, it has a cast trigger guard. Later, this was replaced by a stamped sheet metal trigger guard in the interest of economy. The frame I have heard referred to as cast iron, and technically that's true but it is in fact cast wrought iron, which is softer and much tougher than cast iron. Cast iron is super hard and can tend to be a little brittle. And cast wrought iron, while soft, you know, is pretty tough stuff. Um, the grips are just undistinguished, but not on attractive wood. And the frame is nickel plated. There is an ejector or extractor rather, as you can see here, it pops out just far enough that you can get purchase on the cartridge. And it does not retract automatically. It retracts as the gun is closed. And as you can see in the shooting video, um, sometimes you have to push the cartridge into the chamber to get it to close, which took me a while to catch on to because I'm thick as a brick. Um, the bore of this example, I don't know if we can actually get a view of this on camera. It's actually quite good. And I found it to be very accurate and very pleasant to shoot. 
I genuinely would not mind owning one of these. This one, of course, was provided by a friendly local collector and is a curio or relic. And um, it's just really a nice little gun. There are no specific outstanding or interesting features to note. It's just a solid workmanlike little gun. There is a spring to pop the barrel open, as if gravity wouldn't do that. You can see it in there. And um, the buckhorn rear sight, I found that at seven yards, if I put the bead right at the bottom of the V, I was dead on. Well, the gun was dead on. I'm still a shit shooter. Um, <laughs> there's a little bit of checkering here on the hammer, just enough, not too sharp. And, you know, overall, it's just, it's just a great old gun. It's very pleasant to shoot. And I, I very much enjoyed being allowed to fire it and bring it to you people. If you watch the channel at all, you probably realize that this is exactly my kind of gun. It's an everyday gun used by everyday people for everyday purposes. And it's a gun that most people could afford if they had any motivation at all to do so. And it's just a solid workmanlike gun that does its job very well. And I think such guns are under acknowledged and important because they're a, they are the bulk of firearms history in the United States and need to be properly celebrated. Anyway, I very much enjoyed my time with this. Thanks again to the collector who allowed me to do so. And um, if you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. It's the only way YouTube realizes I exist. Uh, commenting also helps. And if you wish to offer me more material support, there's a link to my Patreon below. Kick a buck or two my way every month. And collectively, it goes a long way. And a lot of the things I want to do for this channel are not inexpensive. So, I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and I'll talk to you again real soon.